Brain Project, everybody, today on the show, we have Sleep Well, a band that has been uh, coming up on my radar more and more from different people around Brooklyn, and uh, very excited to talk to these guys, because I don't think you guys have done an interview. Is that correct? Have you guys talked on podcasts or interviews before? It's our first one. Yeah. 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 Busting that we've been We've been written about in articles before, but never like directly, directly asked questions. Okay. Who the hell are you guys? Like what? D- d- explain who you are. Give us your names. Like tell me about it because uh, I, th- the people want to know. <laughs> uh, Go for it, okay. I am Barrett. Uh, I do guitar and vocals in Sleep Well. Uh, I don't know how in depth you want me to get in this, but uh, I mean, we got we got time. We got time. Okay. Um, then I'll leave it at that for now. I'll wait. To, <laughs> I'll, I'll see how everyone else answers, and I'll, I'll go more from there. All right. Uh, I'm Nash. I play bass and sleep well. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Cole. <laughs> I'm Cole. I play drums and sleep well. Cool. Yeah. Did that oh, work? Right. Playing so, together. Uh, well, me and Barrett have been playing together for I don't know about two years now, but um, sleep well as a whole hasn't really been playing more than what a year and a half, you'd say. Yeah, yeah, just just coming up on two years. We really started like July. Yeah, July 2022 was that first show that started kicking off us actually doing shows. Okay. Yeah. And I'm new too. How long have you been? I've only been, it's like April maybe. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, somewhere Cole, around there. Cole's our newest addition. Yeah? Yeah. Um... He's, our, he's our fifth drummer, I think. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hot damn. All right. Yeah. Um, how did this all come about? Where I mean, you guys have had to play in other bands, obviously, <laughs> to some extent. How how did how did Sleep Well come about? What what was the idea behind it? Any and all thoughts? Uh well, Nash and I I'm gonna I'm gonna tangent this a little bit and then bring it back. Nash and I met because uh we were both living in LA probably 10 years ago now. And uh, my band played a show with his band at some just dinky bar in North Hollywood. Um, I don't remember which one it was. Um, The other door. The other door. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, his band Merciless Jive and my old band 100 Onces, which was like a two-piece instrumental math rock band. Um, So that happened 10 years ago. Nash followed me on Instagram. I did not follow Nash back on Instagram. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> awesome. But he, he, dude, he remained a true follower for like. I was a loyal least, fool. Yeah, loyal fool for like. He was six your reply guy. Years. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'd hit me with a meme sometimes, be like, hey, man, you're great. I think you're really cool, dude. You know? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of. Anyway, uh, we both ended up moving out here within what, like a week, two weeks of each other. Uh, and I posted on my Instagram, I don't have Instagram anymore, but I posted on, uh, on the Instagram that I had at the time, like, Hey, I'm going to New York. I don't know if I still know anybody out there, but if I know anyone, like, please hit me up. And he DM me and he's like, Hey, uh, I don't know if you remember me, but like, I moved into New York like a week or two before you do want to be friends. And I was like, yeah. And we ended up like forcing a friendship. This is, this is the winter, the COVID pandemic winter, so. times, bro. Yeah. Pandemic winter. And so we just ended up forcing a friendship and like ended up moving in together and becoming really good friends. And we talked a lot about making music together, you know, cause we were both musicians. Um, I play guitar in this band, but Nash is also like a very talented guitar player, you know? And so there was a lot of like juggling kind of how we wanted to do it. Like, cause I play other stuff too. You know, I play drums, piano, bass, whatever. Um, we had a couple of different ideas and then, I don't know, I just kind of sat down with an old song that I had written and rehashed it. Um, Nash originally was playing guitar in the band. We had a different bass player and a different drummer. And uh, we just got together and kind of jammed. And um, that's really how it all started. And then, you know, through about a year and a half, two years of just like trial and error with like trying to find a drummer and then trying to find shows because neither of us knew any like promoters or bookers in New York. Um, We finally like started getting things and playing more consistently. And then it kind of evolved into what it is now. Gotcha. So you guys are like LA guys coming out here. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, what what was the big move? Why did you guys move to New York? You know, individually. Uh, I I was in a like a relationship for a long time, and then that ended. 
and then pandemic and I got laid off. I was like, fuck dude. But I've always wanted to live in New York. I think there was always something here for me. And then, I mean, I just looked at like rent prices and it was pretty cheap during the pandemic. So I was like, fuck it. Um, but yeah, it was the, it was the best move I could have made, dude. I love it here. How about you, Barrett? I was born here. Um, and I moved out with my parents, uh, when I was a kid, you know, I did elementary, uh, middle high school in Los Angeles, but I just wanted to move back. You know, I'd been on tour and, and come out here, you know, since then visited family. Most of my family's still on the East coast, like either here or up in Rochester, mostly up in Rochester now. Um, and so, yeah, I always wanted to move back and it's kind of the same thing where it's a perfect storm. We had that sweet, sweet Joe Biden money. You know, I was unemployed. I was getting like $3,000 a month to sit on my ass. And, uh, a friend of mine who I knew from high school in LA, she had an apartment here, still does. Um, but she was in LA with her parents during the pandemic and she hit me up. She's like, yo, if you really want to move to New York, I'll let you stay at my place for close to nothing while you get your feet on the ground. And I left LA two weeks later. I drove out here. And, uh, how about, how about you, Cole? Uh, before I lived here, I lived in Boston for about five years going to school and stuff. And I had, you know, played a couple of shows here with old bands, like over the weekends and stuff. And I just had so much fun and it just seemed like a really good place to do music. So just kind of always been the move for me. Yeah. I mean, natural progression just coming down. Exactly. Makes sense. Dude. All right. Tell me about Sequel. What, what was, what was the plan? Do you just want to get a band together? What was, what was like the initial drivers? Uh, we really haven't gotten to your guys past bands, which is fine. But I'm just really curious about like you guys. Your guys' music is insane. Like I, I was. Thank you, this, dude. And I, I might know. cut this out. I might cut this bit that I'm about to say to you out. But the yeah. way I found about you, I was talking to some chick on Hinge. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. And she's like, she's like, hey, I, I know this fucking amazing band, and they need to get they need to get more shit, like more people. I was like, all right, I don't believe you. And then I checked you guys. I was like, "This is fucking insane!" And wait, uh, who was it though? You got to tell us. I yeah, did, honestly did you, don't did she, know. I don't did remember. She have it in her bio? It's, no, no, <laughs> no. That was a while ago. But she was. I mean, we never even met up. We never. Nothing ever happened. But she told. She was really. She was way more excited about you guys than she was about me, and that's fucking <laughs> fine. Because I was like, "This is awesome," and I've been listening to you guys ever since. So hell yeah! <laughs> uh, it was fucking that's a sick story. Yeah, it was it was a match made in heaven, you know. Uh, yeah, but, please uh, don't cut that part out. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was like, okay, and then I was listening. You guys, you guys, music goes all over the place. Me and Michael, there's somebody off screen right now just watching us. By the way, um, but uh, we we were just listening to your guys' stuff. And hey, you, bud. <laughs> you guys' songs are short, yet they they kind of they all take you on a fucking journey, and like it feels like once you get to the end of them, there's like something else, like what what's the plan for you guys like what what are you trying to do like who are your inspirations like who do you want to play with any and all thoughts that come to mind uh i so initially what i wanted to do breakdowns have always been like my favorite part of any song you know it's just kind of like yeah, let's get to the breakdown dude like what's going on here um and i initially wanted to start a band that just every it was like grindcore where every song is like 30 seconds to a minute but it's just a hard-ass breakdown and that's just like every song is like a different breakdown um, but then I went to school for music. I have my master's in, in music composition. Um, and I like learned a lot about like ebb and flow of songs and how like tension and release is important. So I really started focusing on that. And, um, hopefully, hopefully that's what you're hearing, you know, is, is I really try to focus on like making tension points, then releasing it into something cool after that. Um, as for influences, I got really into like, you know, daughters, um, yeah you know, that, that last daughter's album, um, rest, I don't know about rest in peace, but rest, you know what I mean? If you know the story there. Um, and then I don't know, I was trying to make like, like daughters verses with like Dillinger escape plan breakdowns and just kind of talk about how I, how much I hate myself and how hard it is to stay sober. And, you know, that was like mostly my inspiration. Hell yeah. That, that, and that's, that's a big thing. Uh, wasted space is definitely, especially for, uh, I'm a drummer, especially as a drummer is like, just a crazy song uh but yeah that was like the first the lyrics popped out to me of like trying to stay sober and it's fucking uh it's not super easy um and uh yeah i mean especially in new york it's so easy to drink here um yeah, yeah or LA, anywhere really but especially here um 
it's a playground out here for alcoholics, buddy. Oh my god, you you're telling me. Uh, <laughs> And also, congrats, good for you. You know, it's always a struggle, you know, back and forth and wherever you're at in that journey. But um, yeah. So I mean, like going from going for your music, like, dude, the biggest thing that me and Michael were talking about, and <laughs> Michael and me were like, we gotta give these guys shit. You guys are so hard to find and like nail down. But people are listening to your guys' music, and like, I think you guys are gonna blow up. And like, I'm I'm trying to be the first one to call it <laughs> that's actually done a podcast with you. Uh, cause you guys, your stuff is insane. And, uh, what, the, and you were kind of mentioning before we started like recording, recording was that you, there's a intentional thing where you're not trying to tell people too much. Do you mind elaborating on that? Or is that as much as you you're willing to say about that? Oh, no, I'll elaborate. I just, I respect my privacy. You know, I don't want to be like famous by any means. Originally Nash and I were talking about like wearing masks, like Slipknot. Oh, we did this. Um, I mean, not, not that I'm not that I'm under any, any, uh, delusions that sleep well is going to get as big as like a slipknot or like a Metallica in the scene. Um, but I just really like being left alone when I'm not playing, you know, I like to perform and I like being great. Like, honestly, I like being in the spotlight there. I like people looking at me for that. And then I like to get off stage and have nobody talk to me, you know? Um, so yeah. We're all kind I, of recluse I, after shows. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, it's, it, I agree with Barrett, like doing that, you know, it's nice being on stage and everything, but I love talking to people afterwards, but yeah, it's definitely like once that all ends, I like go home and just be so, so fucking quiet, you know, but we played not, um, last one is that two Sundays ago, whatever. Yeah. Um, at the wood shop, that new venue next to Monarch. Um, and this woman came up, up to me and our manager, Maddie, and we were selling some merch and stuff. And it was so interesting. She's like, I love to read to your music. And it like, I was like, what, what the fuck? How do you read to sleep well? You know? And she's like, yeah, I like to read like horror genre shit to you. And I, it, I don't know. It's hilarious. Wow. But, um, yeah. I can see that there. I mean, there's, there's something, there's something special about you guys music. And I know uh, that sounds really cliche to say, uh, we do a lot of these interviews and I, it, it, it's rare that we get people that are like, you know, more or less just starting out with their, with their stuff. But I was like, there, there's something, there's something special here. And, um, the recordings sound amazing and yeah, I kind of want to go into that. I mean, how did you, you recorded with, uh, quite the impressive dude who I cannot find the name of right now. Jeremy Snyder. Jeremy yeah. Snyder. Yeah. Our boy, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah he, AKA AKA communist Jeremy. Yeah, if you need a lesson on communism, hit that boy up. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Yeah. You'll find out. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Uh nope. so he's he's known for just his, you know, recording of loud bands. Like I mean he's worked with you know idols, found CC. Um how did that come about? I met Jeremy when he was on tour with Idols years ago when they first played in LA. Um, and I was sitting at a bar next to, fuck, I haven't thought of LA in a while. Um, the Monty. Okay. There, which, what venue was that? Right. Terragram. Terragram Terragram ballroom. ballroom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they all walked in there and, you know, we started partying together and everything. And then every time they would come into town, I would just, uh, I'd like hit Jeremy up or whatever. And I'd hang out with them. And, um, that kind of extended into New York. And then, uh, yeah, once we needed to record our, our first EP, we hit him up and then we did that in what a day. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. you got sick though. You had to come back to do your vocals. Yeah. I did my vocals a week later. The first, the first EP, I actually have COVID, um, yeah. doing vocals. Um, the second EP, I was actually sick too, which is funny. We always, we always record like in the, when it's cold, it's like, yeah, sick, like. Yeah, I have like I have bad lungs, and so like you'll you'll hear me like gasping for. Actually, he cut. I asked him to cut a lot of those out, but you can hear me like in the original recording, like gasping for breath in between screams. Yeah. Right. yeah. So what's it yeah. what's it like working with such a? I mean, he's very prolific in in this in this genre. What's it like working with a guy like that? I I I found it to be very sick. Um, he. Uh, he likes Steve Albini a lot and he talks about him as just as much of communism, but, um, <laughs> I, uh, no, he's sick though. Like I remember first working with him and 
and like I think Barrett was doing vocals or someone was doing something. Um and he was like on his phone scrolling and shit. And I was like, what the fuck, guy? Like, come on, you know? But um later he told me like it's an old trick to, you know, if you just sit and listen to something for so fucking long, like you start to hear things that don't need to be fixed or things that aren't even there, you know? Um and I thought that was really interesting because I started doing that just in my own home, like music production shit, you know, um, you could get so zoned in on something and you start like overthinking it. But if you're just kind of not paying attention to it and listening to it in the background, you actually hear shit that um, is wrong, you know. So he's full of little tricks like that. And his recording techniques really sick, too. I think and they recorded that La Fam over yeah. by... Uh, Right next to Danborough Studios. Yeah, yeah, off, yeah. Yeah, off the Montrose L stop. Yeah. Um, and just the ways like mic placements are sick, you know, like it was really cool working with him. He's he's an interesting um engineer. Love that. So you re- so you recorded in Brooklyn? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so everything's everything's based out of here right now. Um I guess I, I have to ask, what's it what's it like joining uh sleep well for you, Cole? Like how like getting in getting familiar with the music has it been has it been rough have these guys been assholes to you you can, you can be honest they've been G- cool no pg rated cole yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. better keep it clean i'll boy. say what, what i'm allowed to say no um <laughs> they've been super sick super nice um it was definitely a crunch at first like i think i had my little like audition with them and then they were like oh you want to play a show like next thursday and i had to learn like eight songs and they're not like the easiest songs to learn with all the breakdowns. I definitely had to like write some stuff out, but it was so like worth it. That first show was really fun and all the shows have been fun, but just like, I don't know, kind of challenging, challenging myself to see if I could do it, like pull off learning all those songs yeah, in yeah. such a short amount of time was pretty fun. You so, certainly did, dude. Yeah, you really did. Thanks dogs. You really did. Yeah, we I mean... loved Cole the minute he walked in because he was extremely prepared. Yeah, he just yeah, like we, sat we down out. and started burning through songs. It was so sick. And me and Barrett just looked at each other like, "Fuck yes." Yeah, he was like, "It was funny." He was like, "Yeah, I like kind of, I kind of have an idea, but let's just run through it." And it was like pretty close to perfect, for, especially for like a first playthrough. Whereas we had tried out a couple other people who were like, "I got this in the bag," and they sat down and they didn't know anything. You know, we had to like teach them the songs as we went. Cole was the first one that like sat down and was already already knew them. Yeah. But I mean, what what about I mean, say what you want to say. But what what about sleep? What made you want to join them? Um, the music was fucking sick, dude. Like, I, I saw them probably like a year ago on this rooftop in Bushwick somewhere, and like at first I was like, okay, they're like pretty cool or whatever, and then I. I don't remember which breakdown it was. There was one in particular, though. I, like, turned my head. I was like, oh, these guys are fucking, like, getting down right now. I was like, that's fucking sick. And then I just, like, followed them for a minute. And then a couple months ago, they posted on their story, like, oh, we're looking for a drummer. And I was like, sign me up. Like, I'd be so down to hit that shit. Fucking A. And that's how it goes. Yeah. And so the story goes. Pretty uh, much. What – where do you what do you like what do you attribute to kind of your guys' sound like i mean i've always been curious because i mean i definitely hear the dillinger uh influence in there and uh me and michael just saw dillinger at um the palladium nice with the og lineup or whatever what what i'm just curious as a drummer because i sound like an idiot uh what what kind of goes into that to your guitar tone and sound or in the bass tone and sound like what what do you think is like kind of the driving factor that makes a sweep well, you know, EP sound like it does? I guess for me, for tone, like <clears throat> I really like, um, I love hardcore, you know, but I really like, you know, in terms of like the subgenres of hardcore, um, I really like the, the metalcore side of that, you know, so like less gorilla biscuits, more knocked loose, um, you know, like laugh tracks as an example by knocked loose is like a huge, I love that album so much. I think it's their best album. Um, so when it came to tone, like I know, I knew that I wasn't going to always be doing the, you know, like beat down breakdowns or like something that required that much distortion. 
but I just loved the tone so much that I thought I'd figure out a way to, to play less intense things with the same thing. You know, um, I don't use any pedals or anything. Uh, I prefer amp distortion over pedal distortion. Uh, I just wanted to keep it simple. And it was, it was like that too, with my old math rock band, I was never much of a pedal guy, like don't like delay on a part or anything. I just like it to be straightforward. Um, just find a single tone that I like and just do that forever. Fucking hey. That's super cool. And how'd you guys end up with, uh, with your manager? I don't know if you want me to say her name, but she's, she's been great to talk to. Uh, what, how'd this all come about? I, uh, met her through a girl that I matched with on Tinder that became a very good friend of mine. Um, <laughs> funny enough. And I, I uh, suspect that is, it is the same girl that told you about us on hinge yeah, that's what <laughs> you were asking earlier <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man it was a plot dude yeah there's a yeah. plot i think that, that's how that's how musicians are connecting now is just through their unmatched um yeah. <laughs> their relationships that well, go more off of websites that's what i was I, I was gonna say that earlier too actually is that we that was intentional like there were a bunch of girls in brooklyn that we knew that were on hinge that literally put sleep well is the best band in their profile. Like we were doing that intentionally to try to get people to listen to us. <laughs> you marketed too. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. And, uh, and so she's been around for the ride. She understands what you guys are doing and it... she's so sick, dude. She's helped us out such a, such a huge amount, you know, like, me and Barrett were trying to do everything at first, and I, and I mean it's 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 okay to admit like there's just some shit you're like not good at, you know, and like yeah. some of those some of those sides of like the music world, me and Barrett just didn't, we just weren't the best at, you know, and and Maddie came out and um really just stepped up, and I think a huge reason why we're at the point that we are now is because of her, you know, like she's really pushed us and has been an amazing part of our team and i'm very thankful for her fuck yeah uh, what do you what what are her plans for you guys uh well well the joke is that she's actually secretly filming a documentary about us like uh <laughs> you know so she can come out in 50 years and be like oh i was with those monsters like she has a yeah. accent you know okay um cool. that that's the that's that's the secret plan that she has we're gonna be the next some kind of monster documentary for metallica yeah okay cool 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 yeah yeah she's so she's trying to build this into like huge divas that just like really are just pains in the ass all the time nice that's our joke uh, with her and she hates it but we just we just constantly make jokes about we're gonna become so egotistical and she's gonna have to take care of us yeah <laughs> sounds like she might be into that though no <laughs> <laughs> she's not i promise she's, you she fucking hates it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i mean i mean good Sorry, uh, when in terms of like the real plan, I mean, I think it's, you know, we're all kind of on the same page as we're kind of just seeing what happens, you know. Um, I'm very grateful with like the progress that we have made so far. And I really do like want to push this and see where it can go. But as I said earlier, like I'm not under a delusion. It would be sick, but I'm not under the idea that like, like we're going to be as big as Slipknot one day, like selling out stadiums. I don't know you know, and, and she doesn't know either. Um, I think the plan is just to try as hard as we can and just see what happens, you know, and just like be happy with the result. Like I'm already happy with the result. Like, I feel like we've made enough of a name for ourselves in Brooklyn that like people, like people have come up to me and be like, Oh, you're the guy from sleep. Well, like that's a, that's something that I'm proud of already, you know? Um, and I think I kind of feel like that's where we're all at. Like, yeah, of course we'd like to get better, bigger. We'd like to do more. Um, but it, the plan is really just to keep working hard, trying to release good music and then like showing it to the right people. Solid. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you guys are just trying to grind right now. Are you guys playing in other bands all individually, three of you at all? Cole's or? in like fucking 10 bands, dude. Oh, yeah. You're a good drummer. Yeah. So. He's a he's a nasty <laughs> drummer, dude. Like five, but they're not, they're not all super active. So it, it works. It's fine. That's fine. How about, yeah. how about you guys? I'm not playing anybody else. I like to do my own stuff on the side, but um, no, I'm, I like dedicating all my time to sleep well. I, I think, you know, I got other shit in my life, you know, and it takes a lot trying to be in a band to, to make it work. So 
I'm I'm happy just dedicating it all to that. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. I, it's this is the only band that I am in or care to be in. I've done like a couple of fill-ins. You know, if like someone needs a guy last minute, a player, then I do that. But um, otherwise, yeah, this is this is all I do. I make my own music too on the side, but that's just because like I'm not always angry, but I love making music. So like sometimes I got to make something that's not angry. Yeah, make like a happy song. Well, I don't mm-hmm. know about that, but yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're talking about you're talking about like you know composition and stuff like that, and I, yeah, and I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that you. Or at least you know you're very interested in composition because that's that's what we were definitely hearing in your songs because it it's so weird because like with particularly with like you know hellscape or wasted space it's like you listen to them you're like damn that was crazy and you're like damn that was less than three minutes each and they just like go across yeah hell, it gives you hell, everything you want hellscape goes off that's a fun one yeah yeah that I think that's really fun. one of my favorites to play live like full song ways there's like other favorite breakdowns i have but hellscape adds like a whole song all the way through it's like really fun yeah that's that's crazy you're getting that guitar tone too with just mostly just amps that's yeah yeah i don't i i literally don't own a pedal i own a tuning pedal wow okay well fucking it um How do you guys like the How do you guys like the Brooklyn scene? Do you think people have kind of been open arms to you guys, or like seen this out? You think it's easy to get shows, hard to get shows? Any and all thoughts that you have about that? I think it it's a mix of both. I don't think it's necessarily just specific to Brooklyn. I just think it's an interesting time in music to like to try to book shows and and play live as much as you can, you know, and like further progress your 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 climb. Um, yeah. What do you think, Barrett? <laughs> yeah, I think I think the Brooklyn scene has kind of the curse and the blessing of being super fragmented at the moment. Um, there's just so many different interests in it, and that's also just a product of the times, right? Like, so many things to be interested in. You don't just find dudes who, for the most part, you don't find people who are just like, I listen to punk rock, and that's it. Like, it's 1977, you know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, like, especially in Brooklyn, like alternative styles of music are very popular and they are seen as cool. And so that's been a huge benefit to us. Um, where it's like pretty much no matter who we play with, they can get, find something in our music that they like, you know? Um, and I I think that's really cool. I'm really grateful for that, but where it tends to hurt us, especially as a band that's already kind of in between genres, like. People ask me how I would describe my band and I'm not really sure other than referencing other bands, but I can't say like, oh, we're a hardcore band because we're not really. We're we're also not like a post-bump band. We're not really a punk band, you know. Um, That makes it difficult to find bands that are really good to play with. Not that they don't exist, but often the best bands to play with, like uh, our friends MX Lonely, who's a a shoegaze band out here in Brooklyn. They're about to play um, a market hotel show, which I definitely recommend going to. Um, I, I'm pretty sure they're headlining it. It's their show. Um, they're they're like a heavy shoe guys band. It's not nothing like us, but like it works really well together. So that's kind of like the weird in between ground that we've been trying to find. It's like bands that like don't really sound like us because not a lot, a lot of bands do, but bands that still work with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, in general, I mean, good good timing and spot. I mean, considering like the Dillinger show just sold out three nights in a row. I think people are pretty thirsty for <laughs> the style of music where it's like a little genre list yet fun to listen to uh i love that your guys uh bio says paranoia has never been so danceable what are you paranoid about that was a matt matt molnar quote right yeah he come up that yeah. yeah i'm pretty sure yeah he's the one that said that um he's a friend of ours he does a lot of booking in um here in brooklyn uh he manages a band a band from jersey called high i think they're high as fuck band on instagram um they're another like kind of shoegaze band we played with them before they're great um i mean i don't know like paranoia definitely inherently i think tracks just from like you know having been an addict um and living that way for so long for me because i like i definitely get paranoid about shit and it's definitely in my songs um we're out you know i was talking to someone about it the other day actually and uh i was like yeah i'm just always waiting for like the other shoe to drop and he's like well dude that's been like a decade of your life you know what i mean like you just don't have enough time outside of that to not be paranoid you know um so yeah i i guess that's that's where it comes out for me it's just like 
having been an addict for so long and like just haven't been like either living on the street or just being a you know piece of shit burning shit down i'm always looking over my shoulder um and i guess that's where the paranoia comes from yeah i mean as much as you want to go into that i mean how i i, I kind of always love the idea of well in a lot of bands i see that have gone so we're like uh the kind of the violence meets sobriety it's like this like this thing that people see is like oh now that you're sober you're, everything's in harmony but it's like people need this outlet of something something energetic and violent to like get that there's something in your system that a lot of addicts or people who just abuse substances that are trying to get out um through their substance use what uh how how is that kind of affected in like uh, as much as you want to talk about it like um at, at what point was like sobriety something that you saw that you needed to to deal with and how did you see a way forward through music to be to become an outlet uh i was actually on tour with my old band uh we were in russia and just a bunch of fucked up shit kept happening to us um the real pinnacle of it um long story short we played on this houseboat on a river somewhere deep in russia i don't i don't uh Nebrezny Chilny. yeah it was the name of the town uh we played on a houseboat right before my band played we were headlining the show right before we played the thing caught on fire and we ended up having to run in and out of this thing to, um, you know, get all our stuff out. Like I lost my way the last time I went up, like being in a fire isn't like in the movies where you're like, oh, oh like running around and shit. Like you can't see anything because of the smoke and you can't breathe because of the smoke. It's really fucking brutal. Um, and everything leading up to that night, like it had just kept getting worse. Like we had been like arrested and extorted in Ukraine by the police. We had like played at this biker bar. And that's a whole fucking other story in and of itself like just a bunch of gnarly shit kept happening. And, and I realized that I'll, I'll finish the night. Actually, the fire happens. Um, the police come and they find out that, uh, there are foreigners there. We weren't there in Russia legally. And they checked our papers and, uh, basically told us that they were going to disappear us. Um, and the reason that we even got caught by them in the first place was because, uh, we had gotten, we had made our way from the fire. We were okay. But there was still a bunch of like booze, still drugs, still people to hang out with. And so we, like we wanted to keep partying, you know what I mean? And so that's like, I dug my own grave with that one, you know, and I'm very fortunate to not have been disappeared by, by the Russian police. Um, and that was like the first time I was like, all right, I, I actually, that's the first time that I really remember praying to God, actually. I was like, I was like, God, buddy, listen, like, if you get me out of this, when I get back to Ireland to finish off this tour, like I will clean my shit up and I will stop drinking, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. And then how did, how did that, uh, I mean, what was that transition into making music and making your own music and writing lyrics? I mean, were you writing lyrics at this point or? No, that was an instrumental band. I mean, I had, I'd written lyrics before I, I had some lyrics that I would futz around with, but funny enough. And I've noticed this happen to a lot of people who get sober is that like the, the inspiration to create, like really left me for a long time, actually. Um, after the Russia trip, that band ended up breaking up for other reasons. Uh, that's when I was 23. We didn't really get sleep well going until I was 30, you know? And I mean, in between there, I had gone back to school. That's when I got my master's, um, in music. But even that took me until I was probably 26 or 27 years old to start because I just spent those like, you know, four years just kind of like grappling with who I was you know, um, and trying to figure that out. And I felt a lot of things, but I didn't know how to express them. Um, so it took me like, I'm 32 now, you know, and, and I stopped using drugs at 23. So it really, it took me almost 10 years to like really get to a point where I am, can like express creatively and like not have to rely on like an outside substance to like give me some creative force or like the muse, you know what I mean? Interesting. Whoa. I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot more, uh, a lot more stories in there, but I, you know, appreciate you sharing that with me, but, uh, but how do you, uh, I mean, this is something we always ask everybody on the, on the show. How do you guys can answer individually? How do you deal with imposter syndrome? How do you deal with like stacking yourself up against somebody else, especially in the music world or in life, however you want to see that if you ever feel like you're behind or just not doing enough shit, like what, anything that comes to mind with, with dealing with imposter syndrome or just like not feeling like you're doing enough. I, I'm constantly feeling like I don't do dick. 
you know, like, like to what Barrett was saying about sobriety, like, um, you know, music while you're sober is a, an amazing thing. Cause like you said, it is an outlet to, it, you know, it's like almost like taking a hit when you're on stage, you know, and I, I, it's done. And then you're like, all right, when's the next fucking show? If you're not playing all the time, you know? And, and, um, I think in today's world with social media and shit, you see like your other bands that you don't know, your friends, bands, like going on tour, whatever, getting a, like a record, do whatever the fuck they're doing. And for me, at least it's inevitable to like have those feelings of, 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 of being stagnant, you know? Um, but that's not entirely true. Like that's my own shit up upstairs, you know? Like you got to just like sit down every day and remember that like the music we're making is very sick and you just have to trust the process of doing it. Um, like I love, I love the dudes I'm in a band with, like we work well together. It's fun. I think that's another part of it. Like you gotta have fun, you know, I know it's cheesy as shit, but uh, when you're not having fun anymore, you're letting all that other shit come in. It becomes very hard. Either of you guys. I've spoken too much. Cole, you go next. Um, I don't know. I just always like to remind myself that like everyone's on their own timeline and you know, like those that kind of imposter syndrome feeling is like bound to happen, like you said, when you're you know, we have social media and you can see like maybe your peers doing some crazy tour, or some crazy shit. But at the end of the day, everyone's on their own timeline. Uh I like to think about there's this Brazilian composer that my friend introduced me to named Nelson Cavaquinho. And I'm pretty sure he didn't put out his first album till he was like 70. And I love that shit. I've it all the time. Like, so I mean, it just reminds me that, you know, like everyone's doing their own different thing, you know, shit will work out when it's supposed to for you. Love it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting too, with like our <laughs> genre of music, whatever you want to call it. Like, I, I don't necessarily think there's like a window closing, but like, but like, I don't want to be like a fucking 50 year old, like, like playing in a hardcore band at like a, a bar in Brooklyn, you know, like, or a 70 year old or a 70 year old, like whatever, like nothing against that. If you're doing that, I just, for me personally, like, I think there, there's pockets of your life where like the music you want to create is going to be different. And like, I don't know if I'm going to be wanting to create that later in life, you know, and right now this is like the perfect type of music that we've been creating for me. Um, so I'm just, I'm really adamant about like staying on track and being focused to take advantage of this time. You know, Barry, you got anything to add? Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. You mean for the uh, imposter syndrome? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know, you know, I've dealt with it a lot. I, and, and it's kind of, I don't, I'm not going to say it's left me, but I think I've just like accepted it. You know what I mean? Like, like Dylan or, or even daughters as an example, right? Like, the way that they ebb and flow songs is like fucking masterful. Like so many of their songs are like in compositionally there, there's not a whole lot that happens. There's not a whole lot of movement that happens, but the way that they wrote it makes it like you feel it. You know what I mean? It doesn't get boring when a song is five and a half minutes long. And it's really just the same drum beat the entire time, like working in like the same harmonic structure. It does not get boring. And so, you know, I see all of like the greats, like the Dillinger's and the whoever, like whatever great band, you know, insert band here. Um, and I don't think that I'm as good at writing music as they are inherently, but I've also like accepted that, you know what I mean? And, and when people like, when you, when you say that you think we're awesome, like, like that's just a way for me, like it, it gives me something to be grateful for, you know? And, and that gratitude pushes me way more, then um the imposter syndrome holds me back because it's like well if, if i can at least connect with one single person if i can like say something in my lyrics that like i think uh, i listen back to my lyrics a lot and i cringe because i'm like fuck that's so cheesy um <laughs> but if i can seriously you know but if i can if i can connect with someone who like listens to it and it's like i'm going through that shit then like that's you know that's enough for me to to at least try to keep going even if i'm not as good as as the people that i want to be that, that absolutely makes sense well, guys, my my whole thing, I just wanted to find out who the fuck are sleep well. We didn't even have any of your guys' names <laughs> before we started this podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we were, you know, me and my buddy were just looking at each other, like this is this is gonna go one of two ways. But man, you guys, you guys got some lore, and uh, word is used a lot right now. But um, it's true. 
Um, and uh, I cannot wait for more shit from you. But let's let's talk about what you guys are gonna be doing next. Uh, you're gonna be playing at Gold Towns on this Saturday. This podcast will come out after that, but we will promote it as much as we possibly can and try to get some people out there. And uh, if I was not working, I would be there myself. But uh, I Thank need you. to see you guys. We're in the same freaking borough, so yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. what's happening with you guys next? What are you trying to do? Are you going to be releasing anything? You have growth rot. You have buried young. These two EPs that are fucking amazing. Like, thank you, thank I you. I put it on. If I if I just pop it on when some people are hanging out at the house, instantly it's a head turner. Like they're like, "What is this?" I'm like, "Oh, it's this band that really nobody knows anything about, other than some I girls." Fucking love that shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hopefully, it'll stay that way. Honestly, I I like. Beside being like a private guy, I do like the mystery. Like it's a fun bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. fun just being the quiet dudes that like just rip a set and then disappear into the night. Where did they go? Where did they go? Um, well, what's next? We 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 do have something that's confirmed on the twentieth, I think. Yeah, that's um, a board friend show. Yeah, we don't. I don't know if we know too many de- too much detail about that yet, but. After that, I think we're going to kind of go in hibernation mode for a bit and just all sit together and, and, and write, you know, I think it's the next, it's time for the next chapter of sleep. Well, um, I think we're very grateful and, and happy with, with growth rot and, and buried alive, but, um, buried alive, buried young, whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, fucking that's kind you of name that. That you you that. wanted to name that. <laughs> I know that, but fuck, dude, this is my whole point. I'm bringing it home right now. It's time to move fucking on. <laughs> um. So yeah, writing, writing's the next step, and then hopefully by the end of the year we'll we'll have some singles out or something like that, and be playing shows again. Yeah, we we have an unreleased song that we've been playing live. We're probably re- we'll probably release that. That one is uh <clears throat> just as a preface probably not what the rest of the songs are going to sound like it definitely goes down like a more mathy kind of route um than i think we should keep going i don't know we, we we're working on a new sound we're working on trying to find this like new groove to fit into that like is something new but also expands upon what we've already done um i also do want to say that we're trying to get one more show before the end of the summer um uh for my friend uh, Lawrence, uh, he has a, a solo act called Rushworth, which I also recommend checking out. Um, trying to get a show with him uh, and and some other people by the end or around the end of the summer, just have a, a blowout. Uh, but then, yeah, after that, it's it's hibernation time. Hopefully, we can get a full length out, you know, next year or the year the year after, and then uh, really hit it with that. Fuck yeah, guys! Any anything else you want to add before we get out of here? This was fun, dude. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, this yeah. is this is a lot of fun, dude. Actually, no, it's honestly though, dude. Like, thank you so much for for reaching out to that to us. You know, um, it's sure. cool to to hear shit like this from people we've never met before. You know, it, it kind of keeps giving us that push we need. You know, um, so thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't I don't want you guys to stop. And if I have any bit of advice, which you're welcome to uh, not take, uh, do just write whatever feels good. Like I feel like you guys got you guys got something special going on. Just keep making shit that you just want to hear because a lot of other people want to hear it too. So, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited for whatever you guys come out with next. I've been playing your shit a bunch and uh, cannot wait to see you. And better, better, better see some handshakes, get some hugs. I want to fucking see you guys in Brooklyn. I cannot wait for uh, this whole. Yeah, thing. dude, yeah, hit us know. up and then we'll we'll set that up. It'll be fun. Fuck yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. It's been Zembray Project. Freaking sleep well. You know, Barrett, Nash, Cole, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate this. See you later. Thank you, man. Thank you. Guys have a good night. All right. You too. Later. Hey, for the love of God, please subscribe to our Patreon for like a dollar a month. That would help out a lot. Podcasts are, fun fact, really expensive to run. And I really enjoy doing this. So if you want to keep on seeing stuff like this, help me out. Also, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time.